you have made a lot of movies about families, but you haven't made a lot of movies where people are both parent and child of parent. Was that period in time particularly important to you when you have a kid and you're also a kid of somebody else's? Yeah, that was, uh, I, 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 in retrospectively, when I look at I think a big part of what I was looking at when I started writing this, that, that and, and that, you, 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 the sort of what it means to be a child as a grown-up, and 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 of course, if you're then your parent, you know, starts to regress naturally, you know, then you become a parent to your parent, and of course, then it gets confusing, and uh, <laughs> and so you know, putting that in this family and, and sort of exploring family mythologies too, and sort of how families kind of create their own rules and ideas for how, you know, in what success is, what failure is, what, you know, is good, what's bad, and how you, you know, you realize when you, you know, grow up that you've internalized these things. Like, in some ways, it's it's no longer even about the parent. It's about the parent that's now inside you. And that I was trying to find a way to, you know, dramatize that and sort of take what is essentially psychology and make it, you know, make it action. How much time do you have to talk, to work, to talk with Noah about where you got as characters to this place? Is there a lot of time for rehearsal and conversation? And Adam's nodding, so yes? Yes, and, yes and, absolutely. And what were the questions that you had for Noah about, about Danny? Oh, oh, I, all of us, we had plenty of time to sit and talk to Noah. First of all, when I read the script, I, I like all of us, we couldn't, I, I just couldn't believe how great every word was and every character and the story and it meant a lot to me that Noah worked as hard as he did and, and gave us this material. And um, just just all of us would talk to uh, uh, Noah more and more about our characters and go deeper and deeper in backstory and find out everything that led to this, this time. Something that's really unusual with working with Noah is, uh, you know, he's ridiculously generous and he builds in a, a massive amount of time before you start filming to work and so we all got a lot of time one-on-one -on -one with him to go very deep into our characters but then he gave us several weeks to be together and to sort of organically find our family together right. and we also got to spend a lot of time with the script itself because of the way he writes because it's so specific to each individual but then there's a, a family rhythm in the language we really needed to spend time with the words together and he gave us that time dustin what is it like when you're working with noah because he is so exact about language and about dialogue what is the relationship that the actor has in interpreting that dialogue if the dialogue isn't going to change fundamentally from what noah's written well, i think the first meeting we had and we we met here in la for a couple of months sometimes two, three times a week. And I think, I think when I read this, we read the script together playing different parts and uh, at the office. And uh, I think the first thing I said was, so do we get to improvise much? <laughs> and he didn't answer and he didn't move his head. <laughs> so I got the point. Uh, but then I thought Squid and the Whale, I said, but that's improvised so much of that. And he says, no. And I said, are you saying word for word? He says, yes. And then when we finally started shooting, we realized it was worse than word for word. <laughs> what is worse than word for word? Well, there was, a, was an assistant, a uh, charming gal who uh, sat next to him with the script and uh, come up to us sometimes and say, that's not a period, that's three dots. <laughs> and to, to, you know, to clarify it though, it's, it's a movie that runs about an hour, 50 minutes, and it's 175 pages. Oh so goodness. usually that's 110, 15 <laughs> pages. So there was a rhythm that we had to, you know, hold. And once we got that, uh, it helped us. The first draft was 220, but <laughs> there was 70 pages on Pagina Man. So he took that out. <laughs> Let's and talk by the way, if you get the DVD, <laughs> you'll see all that extra stuff. <laughs> Grace, I'm going to ask you about uh, Pagina Man. Uh, you have actually had the chance to see some sh student films at Bard College with this play. And, and, and yeah, fit you in got it well. very accurately, I must say. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of friends at Bard, and I got to watch some of their films, and it's 
it's very surprisingly very accurate. And um, yeah, there's a lot of naked people running through woods. Not really much of a plot. Um, yeah. But one thing that I think is important is that Danny and when other characters watch your daughter's film, nobody's judging it. Nobody's saying, yeah, yeah. what is this? They're just saying, this is who she is. This is what her art represents. Nobody's condemning it or judging it. And that feels like that's very important to you, Noah, sure. as a screenwriter. And Danny, it's important to your character as well. Sure. Yeah. Those are good dailies because it's... We hadn't, didn't have the movie yet, so they're all watching the computer screen, and it's me reading the description <laughs> off camera and cracking myself up <laughs> while I'm doing it, while they're all trying to, like, really pay. They were also, yeah, and then I would just laugh, look at anyway. So I'd be like, now she's peeing in a urinal. Now she's, um, but... But then there's also nothing more difficult than trying to shoot a student film with a professional film crew. <laughs> um, it's just like, just be yeah, worse, be yeah, worse. yeah, they're just people are freaking out about how are we going to do the, you know, the, the, the cape, what, what material is the cape made out, you know, it's like, I'm just like, well, just imagine that we're all students here, maybe we just wing it. Um, but it was both like, they were both like overprepared and underprepared. Um, it was like, that was, that was much harder than shooting at the Museum of Modern Art. There's also something that happens to Gene that I would say in the last, given the last week of news, Plays differently. Play, yes. Plays differently in this building where a day ago yesterday, <laughs> we know who was voted out of the Academy. How does that scene play differently in your mind? And does it actually, in some ways, validate what it is that she is talking about having happened? That's interesting. And he's clearly talking about the molestation that I talk about by Paul Edelstein, mm -hmm. um, my father's friend. And it's it's interesting because of the current events. Um, it, it does take on a sudden different resonance uh, for us all, which is unavoidable. Um, but, you know, I think you scratch the surface of any woman <laughs> and she'll tell you a, a handful of those stories. It's just not a complicated, unusual thing. I ride the subway in New York on a regular basis and I have men jerking off at me. I mean, it's just the deal. So the fact that it's suddenly risen to the level of like real huge engagement, I think is terrific. Um, I think it's wonderful how Noah writes about it in this movie because it's, in, it's inconvenient. Because he didn't touch me uh, it's it's inconvenient and it, it gets brushed away and the tennis game is played and I'm sent back to my camp where I'm a counselor and uh, you know it's it's um, it's a wonderful thing that's come up at this moment and it's interesting how resonant it is and how many people are stopping me and talking about it and even before the current affairs came up, um, we did a SAG thing where the guy in the audience who had worked with people who had been sexually abused was asking me about it because, uh, because it was so honestly portrayed in the movie from his experience working with people. Um, and so I say all that just that, yes, it's under a, a magnifying lens at this moment, but it's, it's just a story so many people have to tell. Adam and Grace, I want to ask you a little bit about Danny and Eliza as a parent who's about to send a kid off to college. The idea of the way in which you two get along and what you see in each other is really beautiful. And I think as a parent, I can aspire to want to have a relationship with a child like that. Can you talk a little bit about what you talked about in how your bond as, as father and daughter came together? Because we don't know the backstory. We don't know how they've become so close and how they get along so well. What did you talk about with, with each other and with Noah? Go ahead. Go ahead, Eliza. Well, I don't know about backstory, but that, that was a, a relationship that really drew me to the script and Eliza's love for her family and especially her father and how she does go off to college but doesn't see it as an excuse to to have this independence and to get away from her family. She can't help but, you know, want to know what's going on with him and make sure he's okay. And I thought that was so beautiful. Um, but as a backstory, you know. It was just good to be, uh, we were, we got close immediately. Mm -hmm. Just very, we, we sang, we sang that song. We did a lot of rehearsals on that song when we first met. And then we did more and more 
just hanging out and going over the script. And I did love the openness of their relationship and the, the uh, freedom that they felt with each other to say what's on their minds. And it, was, it didn't feel very parenty. Uh, it felt, you know, the, I am her father in the movie, but we, they feel like very good friends. And, um, you know, the fact that she can show me her movies and, you know, you know, just even even the, the free talking about her drinking and it's just very light and very, uh, it's what my, my wife always tells me with my kids just to make sure that I just stay light with them so they never hide anything. They seem like they, they always, uh, these two are very... Uh, just, just good, good friends, and that's that's nice for that's nice for a relationship. Well, I would say also the song did do a lot for them. I think even in rehearsing that, because in the way the movie, you know, there's so much talking in the movie, and so clearly, and also so little communication. And the, it's sort of like, where does the communication happen? And I, it does happen in the songs. I mean, it's like, I mean, they, I mean, they have a, they, they're able to talk to each other, th those characters, but the the songs. You know the the Myron Byron song is one of the sweeter moments between Harold and you know and the way Dustin comes in yeah. and sort of like yeah. slaps his shoulder you know like there's something very moving to me about even just that gesture you know that he can't quite participate but he's doing it and and that sort of that where the family finds that you know it's watching baseball games it's what you know it's it's stuff that's outside of them you know um, so I do think the song did a lot too, just even rehearsing it.